good. Real good. I'm back. Lawn care. ASMR. Oh my god. Guess who's back? Guess who's back? Guess who's back? Bucky! It's a back time! It's finally back. Alright, so I'm at this property here. This one is not 100% random because I actually look straight across at this house every day. Um, but my neighbors, they got some tree work done and uh, they hired somebody who was fairly new in business. They gave him a leap of faith. And I, I do want to give a uh, quick piece of advice for anybody that's new in business. When you're new in business, your word is very important. When you say you're going to do something, you should do it. So they paid this guy. He said, I'll be back tomorrow morning. I'm going to come get these piles and uh, haul those away. Now that has been almost two months and they're still sitting there. So I'm going to haul these away, but I can't stop there. I'm going to come in and I'm going to clean up the leaves on their yard. They've got quite a few over here. And then I'm going to do the edging, make everything look good for them. And if you guys tell me to, okay, if you guys tell me to, I'm going to have a real surprise for them. I'm going to gut out their landscaping and I'll put new landscaping in here. Something that makes their house look a little better, a little nicer. So if you guys tell me to, I will. Let's go ahead and get started on this. I'm going to pick up the limbs, load them in the trailer. We're doing a bit of remodel type stuff. As you can see the house, we're working on the house. The turf is in lawn renovation mode right now, so it's all dirt. But uh, this here, that's gonna go into the dumpster at the dump and all this will go to the dump and they'll grind it up and you know give it away as mulch. Or, I, don't, I don't know what they do with it. They end up with a lot though. Oh, by the way, uh, we're in a race to a million subscribers with Lawn Care Juggernaut and the Boring Channel, if you didn't know about it. And uh, the Boring Channel said they're going to give away $10,000 to a uh, random subscriber. And I can't be one up by the guy that doesn't talk. You know, it's just not going to happen. So on Lawn Care Juggernaut, we're going to give 10 grand away on here as well. But I'm going to do it a little bit different. He said he was going to give it to one random subscriber. I'm going to give it away to 10. That's five fingers, but if I had my other hand up and it wasn't holding the camera, you would see 10. 10! A 10! Random subscribers. And you might be that person. So go ahead and subscribe if you're not. And uh, we'll start doing live streams probably once a month. And we'll start giving away a little money here and there. But when we get to a uh, million subscribers, we'll do a live stream where we give 10 grand away to you guys all at once. Now, having said that, I'm going to go ahead and get to the job. I appreciate your support and your kindness. When you do subscribe to the channel, when you leave a comment, when you leave a like, it goes a very, very long ways to allow me to go out and continue to bless people at absolutely no charge. Okay? That's what I do. I'm, I'm, at this point, I've given all my lawns away, and it's pretty awesome. It's helped two other guys out. They were very, very grateful for the work, and it's allowing me to have the time to go out and do what I'm enjoying to do. And what I have been given the opportunity to do, which is go out and bless people with my service that I learned over 10 years of being in the business. I actually said in a video, I would love to just be able to go out and be like, hey, you get your lawn cut, you get your lawn cut, you get your lawn cut. And now I actually get to go do it. So again, I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Having said that, I love what I do and I appreciate you guys helping me do what I do. And I'm gonna go ahead and start the job. Rookies, they should have left as much together as possible. They cut it into little twigs.
<laughs> All right, so quick suggestion. If you're in business and you are doing tree limb stuff and you're going to be doing a lot of it, uh, I've got quite a bit of experience with messing with this stuff because my first year we had an ice storm and I had to do a lot of tree work. So a lot like these guys, I had a rookie mistake and, you know, I brought them all back to my house because I didn't know where to take them. Well, you can actually take them to a local dump facility for green waste uh, a lot of the time. So most, most municipalities have that at your disposal. But um, if not, you could take it to somebody's property where they might burn it or something like that. If you're in a rural area, you just have to find somebody that you can do that with. Anyways, the, the thing I wanted to tell you is that if you stack everything in the same direction, meaning, you know, the, the tip of the tree limb is on one side and the cutting side is on the other side, it's easy to move that way. It doesn't get tangled up. If you don't pay attention and you just throw everything on top of each other, then you, you're dealing with a nightmare and it just kind of gets intertwined and turns into this big mess. So, you know, one of the, the best things you can do is if you're doing this stuff is to just take that little bit of extra time and make sure everything's pointed the same direction. Now, I went ahead and pointed all this the same direction in my trailer. That way, when it comes to pulling it out, it's a lot easier, although this is a Bradford pear tree and they have like, um, you know, a lot of odd end twigs that point in all sorts of directions and it tends to grab onto the walls of my trailer a little more than say like an oak tree limb or a maple tree limb, stuff like that. So some limbs are easier to work with um, and some trees have thorns, so pay attention to that stuff and be careful. But really the best way of learning is just getting your hands dirty and doing jobs similar to this. All right. All the big limbs are cleaned up. Didn't take much work. I got a bunch of leaves left. No biggie. Like I said, I'm going to come back and do the leaves. There are some sticks and twigs in there. But I'm going to blow all that up to my truck and vacuum it up, no problem. But in order to do that, one, one, I got to get rid of what I just put in there. I got to get rid of this trash from the light fixtures that we just put in our house. And then I gotta get rid of this crab apple tree that I trimmed and uh, some leaves down there. So, <laughs> let's go ahead and get to the dump. I'll show you how I do that. I'll show you the dump a little bit and then we'll get back to the lawn. Someone stole my Cadillac converter. So my truck's ridiculously loud. This place is looking pretty crazy. It's getting pretty full. That no smoking sign there is normally about 50 feet from the pile. So normally it's 50 feet that way. They are completely backed up. I don't know what's going on. Maybe their grinders down or something. But uh, yeah, there's mulch mountains. You can come out here and get mulch for free if you want. Um, there's two sides. One side is big stuff and one side is small stuff this is the small stuff side and the chippings from over here you know I mean they're a little they're still coarse but they're a little better than the other side now I would not recommend putting this mulch in your house but some people do it stinks like crazy though there's a lot of green material in there that's breaking down anytime you have decomposition well the smells just stout um, yeah, so now I gotta clean the truck out, the trailer and the truck, and the boxes and the trash go up to the dumpster up front. A real common question is, why don't I have a chipper? And the answer is, it cost me $2.75 to dump this, as well as the full truckload, all the way to the top. At that point, it's just more economical to do it this way, take a short little drive, be there be done you know the other thing that goes with chippers well you can get you can chip it up and have free mulch well if i'm going to mulch something i use good high quality mulch and not this stuff which it would be if i was chipping it it would be very similar to this and if i wanted to i can get an endless supply of mulch from out here so it just doesn't make sense i've used this on my garden though it's good for your garden don't use it on your flower beds Okay, here we go. I'm going to go ahead and unload this stuff. And what you're going to see is I'm grabbing stuff from lower in the pile. Typically, 
uh, I would put a few larger limbs on the bottom and that way I can grab those and pull everything out at once. I wasn't really that lucky with this stuff because it was all cut up pretty small so it's pulling away from each other uh, pretty easy. But if you have some larger like eight or nine foot long limbs on the bottom and you have three or four of them then you can grab them and you can uh, just pull it all out at once which is really nice. In this case I wasn't able to get them all out. I had some stuff behind me so I pulled the truck forward and then I was able to actually pull it out from there. Now the box for the truck is full of crab apple limbs that I cut from another project that I did recently and uh, because of that they're kind of thrown in every which way and it's kind of a nightmare as well. Now looking at this property uh, the very first thing we want to do is round up the leaves so we're going to get all of those out of the flower bed first and in this particular job I blew everything to the truck but sometimes if it's a larger property you might just get it out of the flower beds and anywhere like a tight corner or away from trees or obstacles like this pole in the middle and then you're able to use your mower like a big rake and actually use the side discharge to push it to the truck that's a pretty effective way of uh, using your mowers if you don't have a bagging system so you know I've been a, a big fan of not using a bagging system for a long time although I did recently get a mower with a bagging system so we will see how I um, how I like that during leaf season and we'll kind of go from there I know a long time ago when I was using the bags on the side of a mower like a larger walk behind something like that you know those bags are made out of metal and they get very heavy very fast and it just didn't seem worth it to me um, but I did I did like having a bag on my push mower when I was using the push mower a lot that came in handy a lot now one of the big things you might um, have as a problem if you're a homeowner or if you're new in the business and you're using a lot of push mowing um, if you're having a hard time cutting stuff say it's a little tall and you're trying to cut a decent amount off don't try to mulch it don't try to bag it just pull open the side discharge and side discharge it if you can that's going to make it a lot easier to cut the other thing is instead of cutting back and forth in straight lines if you're using a push mower I would suggest cutting in circles where you do one or two passes shooting everything inward and then start doing circles facing outward and start pushing all of the grass away and what that's going to do is it's going to allow the uh, mower to shoot all of the discharge out a lot easier so it's going to be able to uh, function the way it's supposed to instead of clumping up and stopping the blade I'm sure anybody that's used a push mower is very familiar with that and then you kind of do the uh, the the little lawnmower bounce where you're bouncing the front of the mower to try to get the grass clumps out so you know I'll just opening that up and using the side discharge really really helps out a lot and it, it took me like a year probably like a good seven or eight months in the mowing uh, business to to go okay I can use that side discharge because everybody talked about mulching so you hear about mulching a lot and basically mulching is just keeping the material underneath the mower so it shreds up finer but if you're dealing with like thick wet leaves or thick wet grass it's not going to mulch very well because it's going to bind up underneath that mower and stick to the deck and then it's just going to bog down your mower blade so you need it to breathe and push all that stuff out real easy as far as the uh, leaf cleanups here what I'm doing is I'm actually pushing everything in a line so you'll see me going back and forth and I'm staying behind it obviously because you're wanting to push in the direction that you want the leaves to go so always kind of uh, make sure your body's um, position in, in the area that you actually want to push it in it seems like um, the backpack blower is one of the hardest things for people to pick up but you're just manipulating air so if you're trying to get stuff away from the garage door well blow in the middle of the garage door and it'll blow out down and away if you're uh, you know trying to push it in one central location like I am in, in this video I'm actually pushing everything to the truck so that I can vacuum it up you'll notice that I turn my body a little bit and I'm always making sure that I'm blowing everything in the actual direction that I want it to go so if I stand in one spot and I blow to the left and right well I'm gonna have things going to the left and right but if I move my body around more and keep that nozzle tip pointing in the right direction it's gonna go where I want it to now the other thing is when you're moving a large amount of leaves work from the edge of the pile so what I mean by that is you know I'll take uh, 
bites at it, but if you watch how I'm blowing it, I'm not just like blowing at one flat spot on the pile. I'm actually going from left to right or right to left, working the edge of a pile, almost working everything in a line, which will really help as well. And you can see that right here pretty effectively. So I'm coming from the left side and moving into the right, and that way we can actually grab some material and push it out of there. That yeah, seems to work really good for me. Of course, everybody's got different techniques, and uh, you know what you do might be a little bit different, but ultimately, as long as it works for you, that's really all that matters. You know, a lot of uh, people in this business they get very, very um, caught up in thinking that the way they do it is the only way to do it, and it's the right way. And you know, why there are some things that you have to do in a specific way, and it's got a specific technique, and you know, it's important to follow those steps. A lot of it, you just learn what works best for you and you kind of go with that. You know, there's different ways to uh, manipulate the equipment so that it works best for you. You know, if you're left-handed, right-handed, if you, uh, you know, like when it comes to string trimming, if you're in a string trim edges, you might hold a weed eater different than somebody else. That doesn't really matter. Now, when it comes to like mowing techniques and if you're wanting to stripe and do different things like that, if you're in an area where you can stripe the grass, you know, here it's very... Um, well, we're in the transition zone. So some lawns we can stripe, some lawns we can't. It just is what it is. And uh, when it comes down to that, the techniques might change from lawn to lawn depending on how tall the grass is or whatever it might be. But if you're going in every week, you're going to want to do uh, two inward passes. So that means out here by the mailbox, you're going to shoot the grass from the boulevard across the sidewalk into the lawn. You're going to do two inward passes all the way around around the property so that's a perimeter pass and then you're going to start cutting the inside back and forth with lines and you're going to want to have straight lines so if you start on this corner right here and you're going to put angles you're going to go straight from that corner to the, the other corner on the property if it's a large yard look at something all the way across the yard focus on that and drive straight towards that that'll give you your first line from there you can keep all your other lines pretty straight and uh, really, I mean, stripes aren't too hard. It's having a machine that's got enough weight that it actually folds the, the grass over and cutting at the right height and then having the right type of turf. So you can stripe pretty much any grass, but it doesn't mean it's gonna stay very long. Your cool season grasses seem to stay a lot longer and you have those stripes that are real vivid and look real pretty. Um, also, you know, a monoculture lawn is gonna have stripes better than say a lawn full of weeds although a lawn full of weeds you can stripe it's all the same it folds over it acts the same but it doesn't last as long now let's get into talking about some business I've got a lot of people asking me about business questions right now and uh, you know I want to be able to give them tips so I've talked about it in other videos I think one of the most important things you can do for yourself in business is have a CRM it doesn't matter which one you use as long as you actually utilize it so for me that is a uh, yard book I'm not paid by them I don't have a sponsorship I don't have any endorsements or anything like that okay I should <laughs> but having said that I've used that service for a long time and basically what you do is it's a free service but I pay for the paid upgrade and uh, so you're able to put your your clients information in there when you first pick them up you're able to schedule invoice um, I mean, there's a ton of stuff you can do. Mass communication, all your clients. That All that stuff is going to be extremely beneficial for you in business. Utilize technology. Don't think that you can write stuff on pen and paper and, and keep it all in your head and make it flow right. It's not going to happen. The next thing I want to tell you is whether you are in your first year business or going into five and you don't have things running smoothly, one thing is to figure out what services you offer and who's your ideal and likely buyer? So if you're trying to market towards uh, residential clients, or if you're trying to market towards commercial clients, marketing for residential clients isn't really gonna help you for that commercial client. I mean, it goes both ways, but you know, depending on the type of equipment you have too, that applies as well. So if you have tiny push mowers, marketing towards massive properties, well, it's not gonna help you. It's probably gonna hinder you. You know, you might pick one of those up thinking you're making big money, but you're not efficient enough and you don't have the bankroll and you don't have the capital, you don't have whatever you might need to get that equipment, that property is going to kill you slowly. So I would suggest finding out who your ideal and likely buyer is, 
what type of property you're chasing, and then what services you're going to offer. So it might be lawn service, it might be um, you know just landscaping, maybe you want to go into chemicals, um, you know whatever it might be, what type of service. So for me, we offer lawn service, we offer obviously uh, cleanups like this, leaf season, we offer leaf cleanups, we offer mulching and flower bed maintenance and stuff like that as well. But um, you know, you want to kind of have a timeline for that. So that's your service calendar. Okay, so for me in March, we're going to go in and do mowing. But I know that my peak season for picking up lawn care clients is basically March 1st to June 15th. Now, that doesn't mean I won't pick up lawn clients the rest of the year, but that's the peak season for it. So we know we want to start marketing for lawns about 30 days before the lawn season starts. So typically, like I said, March 1st to basically March 15th, depending on the weather and how warm it is, because a lot of the times you're catching those new clients because of the temperature and feeling good and being able to be outside and that kind of stuff. So you want to market to those people 30 days before you're going to start whatever service it is. So right now we're coming into leaf season. You better be doing some marketing. But you know, we're going to put out our door hangers for lawn service a month ahead. We're going to start typically February 1st to February 15th. Like I said, depending on weather and how cold it is, but we want to get that first wave of door hangers or whatever marketing you're doing. You want to get the first wave out there before everybody else and before the season's really kicked off. Now it might seem like a waste, but you're actually putting the first touch to that client. So make sure all of your marketing is branded the same. You want your door hangers to look the same, your lawn signs to look the same, your business cards to look the same, logos on your truck if you got logos on your truck. I don't have logos on my truck. A uh, common question for that is why don't I have logos on my, on my truck? And the answer for that is I'm not trying to pick up new clients. The other answer for that is people got crazy in 2020 with you know everything that was going on and I don't need crazy people calling me um, I had a lot of really weird events with uh, people towards the beginning of the season I was just like taking all that off the truck um, but that is what it is like I had a neighbor that came out and tried to <laughs> try to kill me with a machete I got a call from him from one of our yard signs you know he started like just harassing me I thought about putting his phone number up on Craigslist saying free goats, but I didn't. Anyways, moving forward, that service calendar and then your marketing calendar will really, really, really help you out. Okay, so that's the large majority of the leaves at this point. There are some on the lawn, but that's okay. I'm actually going to mow this and mow it really short. So for you guys that are like, oh, you're scalping. It's intentional. I'm going to take it down as low as possible. And then what that's going to allow me to do is from there, I'll actually come in and seed. So we've got a lot of just native grasses, you know, crabgrass and there's some Bermuda in there and just different weeds. There's uh, some monkey grass. You know, it used to be real common in older lawns to plug the yard with this, which is cool because it stays green all year long. And when it's real thick, it looks pretty awesome. But you don't see it very often now. Um, anyways, I'm going to go ahead and do that, and then we'll edge it and everything, make it look nice and clean. And then we'll give it some seed. And then it's just up to them, as long as they keep it watered, which we're expecting some rain, as long as they keep it watered for about two weeks, this thing's gonna look awesome but like i said if you guys tell me you want me to i'm gonna come back and i'm gonna put them a new landscaping in which will make them feel pretty good about coming home that's what i'm into man i like people feeling good about their their house and and uh sometimes you just can't afford it it's not like landscaping is a luxury item lawn care is a luxury item you can do what you can with what you have but to have a professional come in, it's a luxury service. So, anyways, I'm going to go ahead and get it uh, mowed down. And uh, we'll go from there. I'm going to use the uh, Hustler, by the way. I have the Hustler 36 with me. I'm going to use the uh, Super S stand-on. Thing's pretty awesome so far. I wouldn't say it if I didn't mean it. I tear stuff up, man. So, if I can put it through the ringer and it passes the test, 
you know it's good. That's all I gotta say there. Let's go ahead and get this mode. Now the next extremely important thing that I have to tell somebody that's going into business is to not worry about shiny objects. So like this mower might be a shiny object syndrome, the, a new trailer, a new leaf loader like I have, a, a truck, whatever. My setup took years to get. And what I want to tell you there is that sometimes when you're starting out, you may not have the budget for that stuff. One of the most important things you can know how to do in business is how to sell the work before you get the equipment. Now, I'm not saying don't have equipment. If you have equipment at your access and your disposal, great. If you're able to finance something and you can make those payments, great. But if you don't have the jobs lined up to pay for that equipment, think very hard if you want to do that. There's a lot of people that go into this business. They spend 50 grand on equipment and different things and don't spend a dime on marketing. Okay? Make sure you have your marketing calendar that matches your service calendar and you know what you're going to do and you have a clear and decisive plan. That is the most important thing with being in business is just to have a plan. Now I'm not saying you have to have like the best business plan, but you have to have a plan. I mean, obviously for me, I've always preached speed of implementation. Get out there, get it done, lock in jobs, figure it out as you go because there's a lot of things you're not going to know when you very first start your business. But one of the things you don't want to do is ratchet up your lifestyle with all this new equipment, ratchet up your expenses without having a method to actually cover the expenses. So you don't want to screw your credit over. That's a very, very hard thing to uh, bounce back from. It takes a long time. You know, like it took me like seven years to get my credit good again. If your credit is good, make smart buying decisions. Okay? So you might, and I'm, I'm not saying this to the average person that's got decent credit. I'm saying this to somebody that's young or somebody that might think impulsive or, yeah, I got this under my belt. I can do it. You might want to start out kind of slow. Maybe get you five or six jobs and use a push mower and decide if you like even doing this work because it, it looks very easy on video, but this is very, very labor intensive work. You're out in all sorts of temperatures. It's not climate controlled. It's not a cushy job. Okay. But if you do it, it can be very rewarding. So I'm just, I'm just trying to say be careful and make smart decisions. Have a clear plan. Know where you're going to put your money. Put money into marketing. A lot of people never think about that. Okay, It's not going to be as easy to get clients as you think it is. Now, I'm not saying it's not, it, it's not difficult to get clients, but it is not easy at first because you don't know the methods or you haven't done it before. When you haven't done something before, it's a little more difficult. Now, if you're coming from another uh, job and you've been a sales rep or something like that, you've got a tool in, in your arsenal that's going to give you an unfair advantage. And that's good. You want unfair advantages. Figure out what you're good at and utilize that. But protect yourself. So, now coming in here, uh, I'm going to go ahead and talk about my actual, uh, you know, what I'm doing with the job. In this particular job, I am using uh, not the line that I normally use, and you'll notice that I have to feed a lot more line. I normally use Husqvarna um, titanium line. Again, I'm not sponsored by them. I just like that line. I've also got a guard on, which I end up using more line when I have a guard on. A lot of people ask about why I normally run my trimmer without a guard. Uh, the only reason I have one on right now is because that uh, trimmer I have accepts attachments and that's a fairly new trimmer attachment at the end. But I take the guard off because it allows me to, to have more string out at one time. And then if I'm cutting wider areas, I can cut a, a wider path. Now you're really only using about mm, an inch to two inches at the tip of the string at any point in time. If you're trying to use the whole string, you're going to bog the weed eater down and you're not going to have as much control and finesse with it. And um, I hate that line. Uh, it's a it's a black, <laughs> black diamond line if you want to know. Some people love it. I don't like it. That's just me particularly. Um, now as far as coming through 
on the cracks in the driveway you're going to want to be careful if you look at the way I'm tilting the head you can see that I'm discharging all the debris away from these cars so you can see it's shooting away that's something that you will want to learn is learn the equipment that way you're not damaging anything obviously if you shoot a rock into a car hey guess what you're gonna have to fix that if you uh, shoot something into a glass door you know a French door in the back of the house you're gonna have to replace that window it's not gonna feel so good if you're uh, replacing a glass door on a property and you know that's pretty much all the profit from that property for the year taken out in about two seconds and it happens now uh, the next thing somebody's gonna say is well you could have insurance now insurance is great in business especially if say if somebody took out an air conditioner or something like that but for most windows you're talking about something that's fairly inexpensive and you're not gonna make an insurance claim for that it just doesn't make sense so you're gonna you're gonna come out of pocket for that stuff you need to have a certain amount of money that you're gonna be able to come out of pocket in your business to take care of certain things like theft of a weed eater or you know breaking a window or whatever right it's just gonna happen so when you are um, messing with your finances in your business I would highly suggest separating your bank accounts your personal and business that seems pretty basic but a lot of people don't get it and it might take you several years it actually took me a few years of making that mistake to to finally figure it out I decided to go with a uh, method called um, profit first method you can check that out if you'd like uh, you can read the book from Mike Michalowicz profit first or you can watch a YouTube video on it on um, well on YouTube and it's like a 30 minute video that'll give you pretty much everything that the book will but I would suggest um, figuring something out if you're coming from a blue collar position you're gonna have an unfair advantage of the guys that go out and they they work all day and they work real hard and they're kind of a worker bee mentality which is kinda of how I've seen myself over the years um, but you're gonna have a disadvantage when it comes to doing the work being physically uh, able to do it but long term ultimately you may want to grow your business to the point where you have employees out which is gonna be great for you because this is a grow or die business meaning if you don't grow it to a certain point, a certain level, uh, you're always real close to, uh, let's say, the Mack truck theory. You're going along, all of a sudden, one day, a, a Mack truck hits you when you're on the highway. What are you going to do? Uh, what happens to your family? What happens to your life? You know, you got to worry about Newton's law. Something's always going to happen. You could break a leg. You could do something else. If, if you're if you're solo, you always have to worry about what happens if I can't get this job done. So it's, it's kind of scary being a, a solo operator, a small business, because you have a lot more liability, which is something that a lot of people don't look at when they go into business is all the liability and risk that you assume. Now, that's why business owners, oftentimes, once the business grows, they reap the reward and they make a little more income. But it may take you years to get to the point where you're actually reaping that reward. It might take you a few years before you even make a profit depending on how you start out. Now, um, I've always run my business uh, debt-free. I think that's a smart way to run business, depending on um, what position you're in. But at the same time, if you are having good growth, if you are taking on big jobs, you may have to finance some equipment. It might be something that you have to do. You may not have a choice. But for me, like I said, being debt-free was always a smart move for me. And it kind of worked out that way because I didn't have the option to finance equipment. But there have been many, many times that I just wish I could just finance a mower or something. Because you get to the point where you know you could handle a $120 mower payment a month, no problem. But trying to come up with seven or eight grand, well, it's a little more difficult. But your business will grow. Keep faith. Once you figure out your finances and you get enough clientele built up, your business will grow and your business will pay for all the equipment needed. Now, the other thing is don't forget about your personal goals because what's going to happen is sometimes, oftentimes, for a small business owner, your personal goals and your business goals kind of mesh. And what I mean by that is you quit thinking about things you, you would like to buy for yourself and treat yourself. 
and you start thinking about, I wish I could just get this new truck, this new mower, this and that, because then you know that you need those things to grow your business and to help you out. You know, I wish I could just drop five grand into marketing or whatever it might be. Hmm. Google update. So, you know, the, your personal goals and your business goals might mesh, but what you need to realize is that as you build your business, you want your business to work for you and not just you working for your business. Now, you can be a solo operator and have your business work for you as well, but understand that the other thing is when you are a business owner, it's not a nine to five job. You're going to work all the time. Sometimes it's going to be miserable. You're going to be out in all sorts of conditions. Like I said, um, especially if you're doing this job, I don't know, you might end up doing some other career. You know, there's a lot of people that listen to my videos and they are not in the lawn industry, but they have other businesses and the same business tips apply from one business to another. So I would suggest reading books, listening to podcasts. And when you do, don't just listen to lawn care stuff, listen to all sorts of stuff, listen to a variety of things that will kind of uh, wake your mind up and make you think about other things tips and tricks that you might be able to apply to your business it might not be the same business or the same industry but don't just right off the bat go well that's a different business it's not my business it doesn't apply to me now I know I spit off a lot of information in this video and uh, you know it's it's a lot of talking and some people don't like that I do want to say I should have said this earlier in the video but if you made it this far and you want to just watch these videos with no talking I have another channel it's called the boring channel and you can see all of the same work videos over there on that channel without the talking. Also, if you've made it this far into the video and you haven't, if you just uh, give us a thumbs up, that would really, really help. And if you leave us a comment uh, saying anything, that will help drive these videos up and get it to more people. And the people that need it may find it. If he waters, his yard's going to look awesome. about 20 pounds of uh, fescue seed on about a I don't know 1100 1200 square foot front yard it's gonna look good real good how do you know when you are fulfilling your life's purpose how do you know the difference between the thing that I think I might want to do or the thing that I think I'm good at and the thing that you are supposed to be called here to do number one Put God first. Put God first in everything you do. Everything that you think you see in me, everything that I've accomplished, everything that you think I have, and I have a few things, everything that I have is by the grace of God. Understand that. It's a gift. I've kept God in my life and has kept me humble. I didn't always stick with him, but he always stuck with me. So stick with him in everything you do. So many people are not aware. They live their lives like they're comatose. They really don't examine the fact that you have purpose. And then you have to listen to your inner voice, that inner knowing, that wooing that says, I'm not empty yet. I'm not empty yet. I've worked this for 10 years. I found some fascination here. I'm not empty yet, but I suspect that I will not be able to empty out all of my creativity through the auspices of what I'm doing. Open up to a new adventure. It's like going to the moon. We live in these little cubicles that we've been assigned to like inmates, when in reality, the, your world may be broader than your situation. Don't allow your situation to become your world when it's just a launching pad into the next dimension of your life. You gotta want the best out of your life for you because we only have a moment on this earth. And it's going to be people that look you in the face and tell you that they believe in you. They're gonna tell you from their lips they believe in you. But when you look them in their eyes, you're gonna know that they're not telling the truth. That's the hardest thing for a man to take because belief, belief, as my Great buddy Evan Carmichael say all the time, belief, belief is what excels and, and, and pushes people through the stratosphere. True desire in the heart, that itch that you have, whatever it is you want to do, that thing that you want to do to help others and to, to grow and to make money, 
that desire, that itch, that's God's proof to you, sent beforehand already to indicate that it's yours. And anything you want good, you can have. So claim it. Work hard to get it. When you get it, reach back. Pull someone else up. Each one, teach one. Don't just aspire to make a living. Aspire to make a difference. All right, what do you guys think? It went from ugly to beautiful. I mean, it wasn't too bad. The grass wasn't high. They've been maintaining it because they haven't really been growing much because we haven't been getting much rain. But we got all those limbs out of the way. Uh, we went ahead and cleaned up all the leaves. Mowed it down real low. Got seed down, so it's just a waiting game on the fescue. But as you can see, I'm holding off on this. If you guys uh, want me to do the landscaping, I'll come yank every one of those out. Replace it and put something beautiful in. Replace the edging. Give them, I don't know, metal edging, something. We'll, we'll figure it out. I don't know. I can work up a design. And uh, if you guys decide to do it, I'll do a poll on a design. And you guys can pick. Of course, I got to approve too. But whatever. If you guys want it, I'll do it. And I'll come back and do the power washing at the same time. All right. All that's said and done. I appreciate you guys. Thank you so much for your support. If you would, if you haven't already, go ahead and subscribe. Leave a comment. Uh, give the video a like. Share it out if you love it. If you're watching us on Facebook, I would like to say thank you. If you're watching us on Facebook and it's not on Lawn Care Juggernaut, then it's uh, probably Lawn Care B-Log. And they are stealing our content. So go ahead and report him if you're doing that. I know he's too lazy to edit this out. So... <laughs> i appreciate your help there too uh if you do want to watch us and support us on facebook lawn care juggernaut is the place to do it i have a group if you're a contractor looking for tips and tricks there's some good guys in there dropping tips and if you're just um, wanting to watch the videos those are up there on the uh other page go ahead and enjoy these before and after shots